Hello everyone! It is good to be here with you. Being with my spiritual family is one of the highlights of my week that I look forward to it. How to have a blessed family? That has been a question that is driving our series Toolkit for a Blessed Family. Today, our third session will deal with family conflict. This is, this is something that we usually don't like to be involved in, but we need to handle it in a daily basis. Before we move any further with this topic, let's ask God's direction. Rebecca. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for this wonderful opportunity to being together here, worshiping you in an online forum. And I thank you for technology. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you because we're together, even though we're not close physically. And I pray that in this um, message today, we're going to be able to hear your voice and to experience your presence in a mighty, mighty way. Please help us to develop skills to have a blessed family. In your name we pray. Amen. As you know, in the series Toolkit for a Blessed Family, every week we have a family sharing some ideas on how to have a blessed family. Today, we have with us my parents. Good morning, mom and dad. And I want to know what words of wisdom would you be able to share with us from your home to our homes so we can experience a blessed family? Olá a todos vocês, é um prazer estarmos juntos neste momento de adoração e louvor. Yeah, I'll be translating to English. Hi everyone, it is a blessing to be here worshiping together. Mandamos, Mari e eu, mandamos um abraço caloroso para vocês, porque aqui nós temos 30 graus, mais ou menos, positivos. And we want to send you warm hugs, because right now here it's 30 Celsius positive. <laughs> Uh, neste ano, Mari e eu vamos completar 43 anos de casados. So this year we're celebrating 43 years of our anniversary, our marriage anniversary. Nós temos com a benção de Deus três filhos e seis netos. So with God's blessing we have three kids and six grandkids. Em quase todos os lugares onde eu digo que já temos mais de 40 anos juntos... In, all, in most places I talk about having over 40 years together. As pessoas ficam admiradas porque hoje os casamentos não duram muito mais. And people get, uh, they get in awe because today we know it's difficult to have lasting relationships. E por vezes algumas pessoas nos perguntam como é que a gente faz para ficar tanto tempo juntos. And some people may ask even to us, how do you manage to be together for so long? Na verdade, nós podemos dizer a vocês o seguinte, não existe uma regra. And honestly, we can say there's no rule. Porque cada casal tem o seu modus operandi, tem o seu jeito de ser. Cada família é uma família diferente. Because every couple, every family, they have their own way of being together. They are, people are different. É, a Mari é a minha primeira namorada e eu sou o primeiro namorado dela. Nós temos a graça de termos nos conhecido quando ainda adolescentes, crianças, vamos dizer. So Mari is my first girlfriend and I'm her, her first boyfriend and we met when you were very young. So we've been together since then. Nós crescemos juntos, aprendemos juntos e vivemos juntos. We grew up together, we lived together, we grow together. É uma coisa que tanto ela quanto eu nós achamos que faz bem ao casamento. And we think that one thing that is really good for a marriage é uma comunicação realista e cristã. It's a realistic and a Christian driven communication. E como é isto? And how do you do that? É isto é assim, nós seguimos um conselho que está na Bíblia em Efésios. And we follow Ephesians um, counsel. Ephesians advice. Capítulo 4, verso 26. Chapter 4, verse 26. Paulo diz assim, não se ponha o sol sobre a vossa ira. Paul says, that don't let the sun come above your rage. I'm translating here uh, freely. É, eu sei que primariamente essa ideia tem a ver com uma vida de santificação. 
And he knows that primarily this idea is about having a sanctification life, being close to God. Mas, mas isso pode ser aplicado ao casamento, à But família. But this can be applied to a marriage, uh, a family. Então, um casamento, um bom casamento, uma família, é como se fosse uma contabilidade. Um, it's like math when it comes to couples and families. <laughs> Onde nós fazemos um fechamento todos os dias. Where we have, uh, I forgot the name of that, but where we have, a, how to say, closing. a closing in the end of the day, of that math. É isso que Paulo está dizendo para não deixar para o dia seguinte. And that's what Paul is saying, don't leave it for the next day, that math, probably in the negatives, right? Porque em todos os casamentos há alguns problemas, isso é normal. In every marriage, every family, there are difficulties, that's normal. Mas se deixarmos para depois, para depois e para depois, as coisas vão ficando muito grandes. And if we leave it for next day, for later, for later, things continue, they, they keep getting bigger and bigger. E então é importante que a comunicação, ela seja diária. So it's very important that the communication is daily, daily communication. E evitar usar palavras duras, ásperas, Avoid amargas. Avoid to use tough, bitter, difficult, like harsh words. De preferência, usar sempre palavras amáveis, gostosas, bondosas, positivas. Positive, loving, kind words should be used at most. É, nós temos convicção de que todos nós temos virtudes e defeitos. We are convinced that we all have virtues and we all have a, a challenges. E nós temos procurado valorizar as virtudes um do outro. And we try to value each other's virtues, each other's strengths. E ao fazermos isso, nós nos esquecemos dos defeitos. And then we end up forgetting the negative part. E nós esperamos viver ainda muitos anos juntos e depois também a eternidade. And we hope to live many years together, including eternity after. Obrigado por, por vocês nos ouvirem. Fale um oi, Marinha, porque senão o povo vai pensar que você não fala. Meu Thank you for Hi, listening everyone. to us. And mom, uh, Mari, say something because people will think you, I'm the only one who speaks. So my mom said, hi, everybody. Oh, she said in English, sorry. <laughs> bye, bye. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, thank you for sharing these words of wisdom, Mar Mary and Pastor um, Istina. Uh, since we are talking today about family conflict, let me ask you, when you, when you see the word conflict, what do you think of? Let's turn to Paul everywhere for a live interaction. Let's see what you have to share with us. So, when you see the word conflict, what do you think of? And I think the first word came is... Fighting. War. Huh. Offenses. Yelling. PMS. That's an interesting one. <laughs> Disagreement. Oh, understanding. Ah. Oppression. I saw that. Mm hmm. Divorce. Different opinion, I see that one. Yelling. Ignoring each other. Uncomfortable with it as well. Mm -hmm. Well, many important ideas. Jesus, he was very clear in his statement. If a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. For this reason, a blessed family handles their conflict fairly. Blessed families are able to work through things they disagree about rather than tearing each other down. When we are talking about family conflicts, the question is not if your family will face the conflicts, but when. Family conflicts is in in inevitable. All families have conflicts. It's a, a natural part of human relationships. When different views, needs, or beliefs clash, the family members experience conflict. 
Sometimes conflict can occur when people misunderstand each other and jump to the wrong conclusions. I'm sure you've noticed that we have the most intense conflicts at our home with our family, with the people closest to us. They are the conflicts that bring us the most pain, make us suffer and distress us. The reality is that family conflict, conflict is the price we pay for a deep level of intimacy. I repeat, family conflict is the price we pay for a deep level of intimacy. We need to keep in mind that conflict is not necessarily good or bad. How we deal with it, how we fight the conflict can be good, bad, or even crazy. No one wants to live in a combat zone, but some people do because they don't know how to have a good fight. The beauty is that a good fight of family conflict provides an opportunity for a better and stronger connection and relationship. A good conflict brings intimacy and resolve. So the natural question is how to fight a good fight? Before we talk about how to have a good fight or an efficient approach to family conflicts, we need to understand what kind of fighters we are. What is our style of dealing with conflict? One of the most popular ways of classifying how we manage conflict is proposed by Thomas Kilman, Conflict Mode Instrument, TKI. TKI tries to describe an individual's behavior along two main dimensions. One, assertiveness which is the, the extent to which the person attempts to satisfy their own concerns. And two, cooperativeness, the extent to which the person attempts to satisfy the, pers the other person's concerns. These two underlying dimensions of human behavior, assertiveness and cooperativeness, can then be uh, used to define five different models of responding to conflict situations. Competing, accommodating, avoiding, collaborating, and compromising. Let's try to briefly understand these five models of conflict management. In other words, five kinds of fighters. Pay attention and try to identify what kind of fighter you are. Ah, and as we describe the five models, we will exemplify with short videos, short video clips of one of the most loved TV series, Friends. The first one is competing, the win-lose approach. Competing is assertive and uncooperative. An individual pursues his own concerns at the other person's expense. This is a power-oriented mode in which you see whatever power seems you sorry you see whatever power seems appropriate to win your own position, your ability to argue, your rank, your economic sanctions. Competing means, means standing up for your rights, defending a position which you believe is correct, or simply trying to win. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. We had this cart. Yeah, well, I had a 24-inch waist. You lose things. Now, come on. <laughs> get out of my way. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You know, maybe I wasn't being clear. Uh, this was our cart. Hey, hey, hey. There weren't any clothes in it. Hey, 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 hey. Quit making up rules. Let go. Oh, come on. This is my cart. You know I thought it hurt. You had to do it. All right, listen, Mitzi. If you want this cart, you're going to have to take me with it. <laughs> <laughs> The second one is accommodating. Accommodating is unassertive and cooperative, the complete oppos opposite of competing. When accommodating, the individual neglects his 
own concerns to satisfy the concerns of other person. There is an element of self-sacrifice in this mode. Accommodating might take the form of selflessness, generosity, or charity, obey another person's uh, order when you would prefer not to or will to another's points of view. I cannot believe her. I know. Where do you want to go eat? Oh, oh I love that Japanese place. Ugh, I'm sick of Japanese. We're not going there. All right, well, wherever you want to go is cool. All right. <laughs> The third model of conflict management is avoiding. Avoiding is unassertive and uncooperative. The person neither pursues his own concerns nor those of the other individual. Thus, they're not deal with the conflict at all. Avoiding might take the form of diplomatically sidestepping an issue, postponing an issue until a better time, or simply withdrawing from a threatening situation. <laughs> Come on! Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. <laughs> Steve, are, are you mad at me or something? Because if you are, please tell me what it is I did. Well, if you don't know, I can't help you. Well, I don't know. Well, I can't help you. <laughs> the fourth one is collaborating. Collaborating is both assertive and cooperative the complete opposite of avoiding. Collaborating involves an attempt to work with others to find some solution that fully satisfy, satisfies their concerns. It means digging into an issue to pinpoint the underlying needs and wants of the two individuals. Collaborating between two persons might take the form of exploring a disagreement to, uh, to learn from each other's insight or trying to find a creative solution to an interpersonal problem. What? Please don't kick Monica and Rachel out. This wasn't their fault, it was mine. You want me to kick you guys out instead? No, you can't do that. Where would the chick and the duck live? You have pets? No, no. No, those are uh, nicknames. Yeah, I'm the chick and Chandler's the duck. I would have thought it was the other way around. Come on, man. Just, just let the girls stay. I'll do whatever you want. Really? You do anything? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, I got something you can do. What? What? What is it? Can you be my dancing partner? <laughs> the fifth and final model of dealing with conflict is compromising. Compromising is moderate in both assertiveness and cooperativeness. The objective is to find some expedient, mutually acceptable solution that partially satisfies both parties. It falls intermediate between competing and accommodating. Compromising gives up more than competing, but less than accommodating. Likewise, it addresses an issue more directly than avoiding, but does not explore in it as much depth as collaborating. In some situations, compromising might mean splitting the difference between the two positions, exchanging concessions, or seeking a, a quick middle ground solution. No, we're going to split it. You take half and I take half. Well, that's not fair. You've already had some. Well, oh, they're not. You know what? I think Monica would be very interested to know that you called her cheesecake dry and mealy. What do we use to split it? Okay. <laughs> All right. Pick a half. Okay. Well, this side looks bigger. Uh, there's more crust on this side. Yeah. So... Maybe if I measure... Oh, for God's sake, just pick a piece! All right, pick that. <laughs> so the smaller piece. Here we are. You now have a glimpse of the five models of conflict management. Each of us in, uh, capable, are capable to, to using 
all the five conflict handler models. None of us can be characterized as having a single style of dealing with conflict. But certain people use some modes better than others. And therefore, they tend to rely on those modes more heavily than others. Whether because of their uh, characteristics, personal characteristics, or practice. If I ha had asked you, what are the two styles that are, you are more inclined to use in a conflict? What would they be? How do you see yourself? So take your electronic device and let's go for some interaction through poll everywhere. What are the two, okay, we're here, so let's speak. What are the two uh, styles that you are more inclined to use in a conflict? A, competing, B, accommodating, C, avoiding, D, collaborating, and E, compromising. And every person needs to choose two. Two, yes, please. That's Take right. two. Take two that on your situation you like to, to rely on, right? In a conflict. Well, so far we have more people relying on compromising. Uh, we have some collaboration here, right? Yeah. There are a few that they like to be right, the competing, right? <laughs> Accommodating, they are giving up, so they don't uh, are involved in a let's say let's say in a conflict. Huh? Avoiding, we have some people, some avoiders in the group. Yeah, but we see more compromising here, mm -hmm. right, than others at up to this point. Thank you for being part of our restore worship service, sharing with us to the poll everywhere. Having an understanding of the five models can be very helpful in dealing with family conflict in an effective way, or in other words, having a good fight. It is important to take into consideration who you are and what kind of style you usually rely on when conflict takes place. Likewise, it's crucial to be aware of the kind of conflict management that our family members rely on. Knowing when and how to use each style can help control conflicts and lead to a good fight. But what would be a practical way to have a good fight? How to defuse conflict? Pastor Chip Ingram, using the word diffuse, proposed an acrostic to provide a biblical solution to conflict resolution. The first letter of the word diffuse, D, stands for define the problem. Before you approach any family, family member and deal with the conflict, retreat and try to answer the question, why is there a conflict in the first place? When did the conflict start? How do I feel about this? How would God see and act in such a situation? Pray to God. Ask for help to see the situation through His perspective. The second letter, the that's the uh, the second letter I stands for initiate a time to talk. Take the initiative. Sometimes our ego or even our feelings held us back from taking the first step, but take the lead. Choosing a wise time and a good location for a talk is crucial for a fair fight. Maybe you need to schedule this time when you are fresh and rested. You may need to find a different place to have this conversation other than your home. You may say, as I was alone, I thought about the issue and I thought after dinner, would be a good time for us to talk. You need to initiate a time to talk. The first F stands for focus on the problem. So as you get together to talk, 
start affirming the family member or members, demonstrating how important they are to you. Then, bring to their attention the issue that needs to be dealt with, stating the issue concisely and clearly focusing on the problem or behavior and not on the person. If possible, avoid sharing your own perspective or feeling about the issue at this point. Focusing on the problem means that you won't focus on the person. Don't use the words ought, should, always, never. You ought to do this. You should be doing this. You. That does not help. Focus on what the issue is. Do not bring up old issues and problems. These only distract from the present issue. You can discuss them later. Keep a clear picture of the problem to be dealt with. Then, the next step is quite crucial. The second F stands for feel their pain. Stephen Covey wrote, Seek first to understand, then to be understood. See, the issue from the other person's point of view. Provide a respectful, secure, and loving environment for the other people in your family to share their perspectives and feelings related to the issue. You need to step into their shoes. Ask the question, what would be to be like them on their shoes, on, in their world? Before you are able to relate to their perspective, you will probably be judgmental. You don't resolve problems always being right. <laughs> and the other person always being the one that needs to straight up. That's not how to resolve conflict. What is the issue? Instead of trying to blame the other person. The you is for uncover the root problem. Most of the time, we just argue about the symptoms. Underlying the symptoms may be a trust problem, a communication issue, a matter of anger, a loyalty aspect. And dealing with the symptoms is important, but it is crucial to deal with the root of the problem. Then S stands for set things right between you. As James 5.16 says, Confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another and then pray for one another to be instantly healed. You need to set things right. You need to look into the eyes of your spouse, child, parent and say, I am sorry. I want you own my own part on this. I want to ask you to forgive me. That part is so crucial for a good fight. The last letter E stands for establish a plan. Come up with a specific game plan of what you want to do. We need to be doers and not only talkers, as James says. Maybe you realize that the issue was not completely resolved, that you'll need the assistance of a mediator, maybe a professional help. Don't be afraid to take the next step for your own sake and the sake of your loved ones. Now that we have shared a constructive approach to conflict with you, a way to have a fair fight, avoiding um, bad and even crazy fights, let me ask you, what would you like to highlight on this approach or even add to this system? Let's divide into groups and take four minutes to talk about it. After that, each group will, will present a quick report from their discussion. If you're worshiping with us through Zoom, 
please accept the Zoom invitation to be part of a hub. If you are worshiping with us uh, through Facebook or YouTube, you can leave your thoughts on the chat or comment box. See you in four minutes. I hope you had enough time to talk about diffuse and some and maybe bring other inputs to this system. And we wanna hear from the hubs. And the first hub that we're going, oh, is there. Jojo and Gabriel. <laughs> and baby Dow probably. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good morning. Morning. Uh, that, that was that one to speak up. Anyway. Um so Tammy had a point, uh, which I totally agree that before actually doing anything of it, before the diff uh, diffuse strategy, 
we need to pray first. Uh, pray, ask us to output on our ego to um, uh, get help from the above that uh, just try to better use those strategy, use those approaches. And I, I do agree uh, with O'Neill. O'Neill was saying, um, hey, thinking about another thing. Uh, maybe this conflict doesn't even exist. People are having conflict because they have different, they, they, they are talking about, about different, different things. things. So, you know, let, let him talk first. Let him fully express his idea. Maybe this, this, this problem doesn't ex exist at all. And with time, uh, things can, can cool down. Because you guys are, are actually standing from different points and talking different things. You're not solving problems. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's cool. two very cool uh, opinions. That's good. Thank you. Thank you Thank for that. Thank you. Uh, Juliana, who's next now? Okay, so we're turning to the Lens Hub, and let's hear from them. Hi, Mandy. Hi. Hi. Awesome. Okay, so we got to our hub, and we were really impressed, I think, with all, all of the options. Um, the competing accommodation, assertiveness, collaboration, compromise. I think all of us were just really impressed with all those options. And I think, you know, for myself personally, I think about how I used to argue at the beginning of our marriage. And now that we've been married over 20 years, I think about how I argue and um, handle conflict now. And I've grown a lot, I think. Um, it's, it's neat to learn skills though. And I think we always have to, you know, bring them up again and revisit these things because marriage is very difficult and it's always tough, even for those of us married 20 plus years and, and those that have shared married for more, you know, it's something you consistently have to work on. So it's really good with conflict. Thank, Thank you. you. That was great. That was great. Okay. So now we're turned to the, the right family, the right hub. Okay. So let's hear from them. Hi, Phil. Hi, Heather. Hi. Hi everyone. We uh, Rod had a, a good point, uh, like what uh, um, Gabriel was sharing about how you, when you when you define it, you may not even have an issue. And um, we also tied in with the children's story about how if you deal with it, you know, maybe not right in the moment when the kettle's boiling over, but you want to deal with it before it burns dry. Mm. So we uh, we talked about a few things like that. Thank you. That's great. Yeah, that's. Okay, so we're turned now to the Paula's uh, hub. And I think Alex is going to oh, share okay. with us. Hi, yeah. Alex. Hello. Hi, everyone. I miss you all. That's so great. Uh, yeah, like we had an interesting discussion about like how all this works and you know, all like defining problems. And like one of the good things that Pastor Stina came across with, um, I'll try to translate, but like it's better to be happy than having like a uh, you know, the a reason, you know, or kind of having the, I'm right, you know, mm -hmm. like it's better, like sometimes it's better, like just to be happy and, you know, let it go. Uh, so yeah, like I really agree with all the other points that the other groups uh, pointed out. Uh, yeah, basically it. That's great. Thank you. It's better to be happy than right. Okay. Happy, there's a saying, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> yeah. Even when my wife is wrong, she's right. I have learned that. <laughs> okay, let's turn now to the Campbells for some deep uh, thoughts, not like I shared. <laughs> so. Okay, I guess, I guess I'm the spokesperson oh, in this group. Hi, oh, Aries. Hi, Alden. Hi. Uh, these are things, man. I'm still trying to to learn, and um, I, I I I can't necessarily relate to Mandy in the fact that the the um, number of years um, get you better at this. Sometimes they just make you more lazy and fall into ruts. <laughs> but I'm uh, I'm so glad we're talking about this uh, because it's it's inspiration to to keep polishing those edges. Okay, so the two the two thoughts that I brought forward were from uh, a Mad About Marriage seminar I attended in Pine House a number of years ago with the Tuckers, and these really spoke to me because I could really relate to them. So I'll just share those quickly. Um, and I think it was brought up in the diffuse section. Um, Try and keep your try and keep your um, issues only to one issue at a time. Uh, I think within our household, we could both agree that our natural defense mechanism, when a problem is brought up, 
is to say, but you do this. And now you've got two problems and you're no longer being productive. Sometimes I think it takes courage to even bring up a problem because you know you're going to have conflict. And just to know that um, then it's going to be a free for all adding up um, is not doing anyone any favors. So one issue. Um, the second one is, I'm going to get Eldon to demonstrate this one, um, is imagine I'm holding a ball and so we're facing each other like this and the ball is the problem between us if we keep it right here then you can point like this <laughs> we're starting to look at the issue and it's each other's fault but if we take the problem and we hold it over here mm -hmm. we're both facing the same problem and now we're not we are not um, accusing each other we're saying we're acknowledging there is a problem and we're working on this together wow that was great thank you for that I'm glad that we had gave this opportunity for people to share. Yeah. That's good. Uh, do we have one more? The Kalagians, right? Okay, the Kalagians. Yes, let's turn to the Kalagians and they the host Kalagians today, right? They, yeah, great yeah. hosting, guys. Yeah, thank you. And Jeff, yes. Oh, Jeff. Okay. I tried to say your last name, but I have a hard time and I think I'm going to make a mistake. So, hi, family. <laughs> Hello. <Hi. laughs> the Washer family. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, so um, loving everything I'm hearing, I just wanted to build on what Eris was just saying, and there's um, a saying I really like that says, it's not you and I against each other, it's you and I against the problem. And it is really important to have a language like that to understand and identify what's going on. Um, we were enjoying everything with Diffuse and um, not really finding a whole lot to add to it, but there were a few things. One of them we were saying is when, you know, being proactive is the best, giving people space, of course, is the best. But when it really comes to a point of conflict where uh, people are going to not perhaps be their best self. It's important to give people that space to have a line that you say, when this happens, I need to maybe disengage or at that point, we're not going to have that interaction and, and to honor that space on both sides. So to know for yourself what those points are, what those deal breakers are, or those things that might push you to a limit and to communicate that with your partner and for your partner to respect that and to actually not uh, engage beyond that point. That's that's extremely helpful. Another thing our group mentioned was how one communicates. It's not just the words, it's how it's being communicated. And it's important to understand how you're presenting, uh, in particular when you're frustrated. Uh, so you're not accelerating a situation, right? You're not, you're not adding to it. So again, being aware of your own behavior, communicating what it is you need, having those definitive lines to say, okay, I'm going to stop engaging at this point because that's we've decided that's a rule of engagement um, and also to be aware of how we present and communicate with each other and, and how we're looking and sounding right it's not just the words it's how we're communicating awesome that's great thank you thank you all e each hub's contribution was very important uh, for developing practical tools for a good fight blessed but not least we cannot forget the importance of love and its expressions as key elements for fighting a good fight in family conflict. Family conflict resolution requires love and what emanates from it, such as care, understanding, respect, patience, grace, and forgiveness. As the Apostle Peter wrote, most important of all, Continue, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. Let the love that you have for your spouse, child, or parent overflow as you fight the good fight. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for creating us. Thank you for making everyone a unique person. And we praise you for the differences of feels, opinion, taste, preferences. And sometimes when there's a clash of those uniqueness, we may face some challenges. But I pray that everyone that is listening to my voice use those moments of conflict to bring them closer to one another and close to you. I pray that forgiveness, love, 
will manifest in a mighty way so your name may be glorified. Forgive our sins, Lord, and be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm-hmm.